Hey guys, JB here, the real wolf of Wall Street in the Wolf's Den for another awesome podcast episode. And I got an amazing guest today. I got literally the greatest pitcher in the world right now. Cy Young Award winner, San Diego Padres. The guy's an absolute killer, a legend, young guy. Talking about Blake Snell. He's a hell of a nice guy too. We talk about some really cool stuff out. I taped yesterday, just so you know, so I know what we spoke about. It, it is off the charts great. We talk about money in sports, why most athletes end up dying or, or at least leaving the sport broke, and also politics in sports, what's coming next. You got to hear this one. Also, there's a big challenge we do together, basically, where we're going to announce a charity event where he's going to be throwing some fastballs at me. It's going to be interesting. But anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Quickly, a word from our sponsor, and then we'll get back to Blake Snell and I talking turkey. All right, listen, I'm a busy guy. You all know that, right? I don't have time to inconvenience myself with super tight pants, shorts, and itchy underwear up my ass. No one likes that. You don't like that, right? That's why I wear bird dogs. Now, I'm not just saying that company before I agreed to do this they sent me like 20 pair and I gotta tell you I tried them out and they're freaking awesome you know what it feels like it's like it's like having clouds surrounding my balls working out lounging around even for nice dinners you don't have to even believe this giveaway but just go to birddogs.com enter the promo code wolf and they'll throw in a free bird dogs whistle ball you remember those nerve vortex howler footballs that whistle when you throw them? Well, guess what? That's what Bird Dogs threw their logo on. It's genius. That's birddogs.com. The promo code is WOLF. And boom, just like a free Bird Dogs whistle ball would be in your house soon enough with your own pairs of Bird Dogs. You will not take these things off, I promise you. I got 20 pair now and I wear them all the time. All right, so Blake, what's up, my friend? Listen, you're a pitcher. You signed a massive contract, like 50 big ones. And I think the thing the thing about baseball, though, is it, like you have more longevity than like a football player, right? What's the lifespan of, of the average, like a top ball player like yourself? I mean, I would like to say 20 years, but for me, probably 15, maybe 20. I don't know. But I would say the, aver the average for a ball player in general, I think is like four years. But for, you know, the guys that are talented and have, you know, gifts beyond belief like Trout, and they can usually last anywhere from 15 to 20 years. Wow. So um, is this something like, did you always know from the time you were a kid that like, you know, like the first time you picked up a baseball, you were like four years old and you like threw the ball at your dad and you're like, he's like, what the fuck? And he's like, was, was it like that? You just had a natural ability from the second it started? Was something that developed over time? Yeah, it was definitely over time. Uh, I always knew I was going to be a big leaguer. Like, I don't know why I thought that from a young age, but I always believed it and I always thought I would. Uh, and then when I got to like high school, I was like five, six. I was a small kid. I was like a sophomore. I was like, if I get to a community college, I'll be good. I was really happy about that. Um, and then I grew from 5'6 over my sophomore summer going into my junior year, 5'6 to 6'3. And then that's when I was like, I started throwing way harder. And I was like, okay, I got a real shot at this. How come that shit didn't happen to me? I mean, I'm fucking was 5'6 and I'm 5'7. What the fuck? I mean, <laughs> you know? Good it pisses genes. me off, man. You know, it fucking pisses me off. What were you what, what were you eating or is your parents toys? I mean, your parents are tall, right? I thought you eating like cereal and Pop Tarts. Like they weren't feeding me nothing great. <laughs> you just grew like a freaking weed, right? Yeah, no, and like no stretch marks, no nothing. Like I didn't even and did, know. Ev I was did growing. everything grow? Did everything grow? All parts of you, all the most important parts of you grow. You're like <laughs> Yeah. You're, you're just like a big you like a big dude where it really matters or what? I, I, listen, I'm talking about your hands, by the way. I know pictures yeah. are crazy about their fucking hands, right? Do you like take yeah. special care like of your hands? Are they insured and anything like that? Like a manicured every day by eight girls just fucking dump, you know, buff your nails and shit. What how does that work? Not anymore, but there was a moment like early on in my career where I was getting like manicures and pedicures all the time to like make sure like nothing would go wrong. But now it's like I know how to do that and I don't really care about my feet. So <laughs> it's like this, like this the Zoolander guy in the movie Zoolander, the guy's got the glass bubble around. Yeah. His hand. <laughs> it's like a hand Literally. model, right? 
So, so, so when did you? So you always knew you wanted to be a ball player. Was there a certain moment in time when, like, you you like something happened, or you like was there some moment when, like, you either had a coach or you learned the way of throwing? Or was or was it just like a real slow evolution? Were there these moments of greatness that you realized you took quantum leaps? It was kind of my dad. My dad played pro ball, so he had like a good idea, and then he just like always pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and. uh that's kind of where I got, you know, good at baseball was just from him, learning from him. Uh, and he kind of taught me all the right things. And then when I got into pro ball, he like backed up and then let the coaches coach. But I mean, I was just always around, you know, people that really understood the game. And then I would just ask them questions and I just, yeah. So then through all of that, I just, I just felt like, yeah, I have the right people around me to really do this and be a successful big leaguer. So that was kind of always like, I just always had people in my corner to really help me. One of the things that always, you know, interested me when I was a kid, when I was very young, and I think I know the answer, but I want to ask you anyway, is like, you know, it was always like this thing, oh, he's a pitcher, he can't hit the ball to save his life. Why <laughs> is that? That like, I remember like when I was growing up and I go to see like the Mets play, the Yankees play, and like, and the pitcher like Tom Seaver would get up, it was like a joke, oh, there he goes, that's a strikeout for you or something. Like, why yeah. is that, that a pitcher can't hit the ball? Well, it's more so we just don't practice hitting at, like as much. So we really never practice it. So you have hitters that practice hitting every single day. They get to see pitchers every single day. So, and they only hit, the best ones hit 300. So for a pitcher to go up there who doesn't hit every day and hits, you know, every once in a while, it's just going to be a lot harder for that guy to, to get a hit. But there's nothing fundamentally wrong with you. Like, I mean, it's like, obviously no. a great hand-eye coordinator. Simply that you're not practicing it. And also, I guess when it gets to that level, like, and what is that dif- What is that difference, like, between the top? Guys like you, you're a Cy Young Award winner, one of the best ever, right? What's yeah. the difference between you and a guy who's, like, triple-A ball and, you know, throws? What's the difference there? What? How, is it a huge difference? Is it a small difference? It could be, you know, it, it, it's multiple parts. One, the talent. Um, the talent could be a difference. Um, it could be the amount of pitches that you have, the eliteness to those pitches that you have, um, and then the consistency of putting it in the zone. Um, that's one part. But then I think the biggest part is the mental side. Everyone says the mental side, but do you understand the mental side? Do you understand yourself? Um, that's kind of – that's like the more important ingredient because uh, all the pitchers have – they have their pitch that's elite. There's a reason they're in pro ball. There's a reason that, that you know, at the highest level. But, you know, the way they, they talk to themselves, the way they know themselves, I think that's the most important thing that can really, you know, make a pitcher as good as he possibly can be or just as average as he wants to be. Was there a certain pitcher that you looked up to growing up that you like, man, if I, if I could do what this guy, be like him, I, you know, that would be my dream come true? Well, I always watch Mariner pitchers. So like Randy Johnson, he was like my guy, but I always liked the position players. Ken Griffey was like my guy. I wanted to be an outfielder, center fielder, do everything he could do. But obviously I'm nowhere near that ability. So I was like, throw the ball good. So I was like, I'll be a pitcher. But like King Felix was a guy I always looked up to and Randy Johnson. And do you think that like, it it seems like of all the sports, baseball has been the least impacted by politics which i think is, is, is that is it doesn't seem that way to me maybe i'm you know i'm listen, i'm not i don't watch every game or anything but it seems to me like it hasn't quite gotten there as much where like baseball still kind of like about baseball not so much about people making a statement politically is that is that yeah. true or is that not true i mean i could see that but again i'm like i never get into politics because every time i get into politics i don't know much about it but every time i would it's like the biggest argument. Everyone's getting mad at each other. And I'm like, I'm not talking about it. <laughs> like, And I think that's how a lot of guys in baseball are. Because even in the clubhouse, like, we'll talk about like what's going on in the world and stuff like that. But when it comes to politics, it's just a very sensitive subject. So I feel like a lot of guys in baseball would rather just keep it to themselves more so than express it. Yeah. What about your uh, personal life? Like, are you married right now? Uh, no, not married. I have you got a, a girlfriend. girlfriend. Yeah. How many years has you got a girlfriend for? Uh, just a year. About a so year, it's, right? It's fresh, yeah. And but and I, what was it like being like? So I assume you just kicked ass in high school, right? You must have kicked ass. Like, yeah, to get to the point, where you, what, right? <laughs> it must have been pretty fun for you in high school, right? Like being yeah. like an amazing athlete, right? 
What yeah, high school like? was amazing. What, 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 like, what was it like to be that guy that was just like, you know, like just a fucking school legend? I mean, it was cool because I have a twin brother. So, like, growing up, my parents always, like, it was always about us. So even when I was, like, the dude in high school, probably my junior year, senior year, I was more the dude then than anything. Um, but it was cool because it was all, that was all my people. So, like, they never treated me like, oh, like, you're this or that. They just treated me like who, who they know me as. So um, I think that was the best part about high school is, like, I didn't get treated, like, on a high pedestal or anything like that. It was just kicking with my friends, doing the same thing, playing pickup basketball every day after school, like just hanging out, having fun. But then when I got drafted, that's when like the hype and like all my friends, like and people that I went to school with were all, they were all in on that. But before the draft, like it was amazing. I was just chilling, doing dumb stuff, playing like fugitive and like all these just weird games, like with my friends, staying out late. Like, yeah, nothing crazy though. What about your brother? Is your brother a baseball player too or no? He didn't. He... Yeah. So we played, uh, we grew up playing football, baseball, and basketball together from the start all the way until I was 18. And that was like amazing. And then I ended up going to pro ball and then he went to a community college and then now he's doing like landscaping and other things. But that's my boy. Like We're very close. Is it, is it an identical twin brother or fraternal? Paternal. We don't look nothing alike. He's six oh, foot, really? blonde hair, blue eyes, and he's like a little jokester. Got it. Got yeah. it. So was it was it like a um, weird, like kind of like who adapt like when you get to the big leagues? Tell me the pathway. So you when, when did you get drafted? How old were you? I got drafted at eighteen in two thousand eleven. And then where'd you where'd you go first? You go to uh, you know AAA has a start. Yeah, so we don't go to AAA. I wish I went to AAA. We go to, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I went to Florida, and I got off that plane, and I've never been to Florida. That's a different kind of heat in July. So I got out in Florida. I'm wearing, like, a black polo. I'm wearing jeans. And then, uh, yeah, so I was in, like, the GCL playing on a backfield. I'm thinking I'm going to have fans watching me. There ain't <laughs> nobody in the stands, like, nobody. And then it took me five and a half years from that point to get to the big leagues. And that journey was like, I was in Florida. Then I played in the rookie advance in uh, West Virginia. Yeah, Princeton, West Virginia. Then I played in low A the next year. And I was in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Then I went back to Florida for high A. Then I went to double A in uh, Alabama. Then triple A in North Carolina. And then finally the big leagues after all of that time but like you're all over the place and you're playing all these different teams and once you get to like rookie ball advance you have fans and as you go up you know the fans vary with you know how what kind of city you're in mostly uh but but it was it was a lot a lot of work and a lot of like grinding to get to the point of where i'm at now what's the difference in like in terms of money from like triple a to, to, is it like just literally like it's insane like your first paycheck first place you're rich second place a set of steak knives basically right oh my god yeah, like <laughs> yeah and it all depends like if you've been in the big league you got time and you play in like triple a and you sign that deal you'll be you can make like three hundred thousand five hundred thousand like you make good money um but if you're not and you're coming up like you're making like i want to say like 1500 maybe like a month maybe a little more Maybe like three. I wow. don't really remember. It's been a while. I just know it was nothing, like enough to just pay for your apartment and food. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that was that was kind of my journey. But I mean, I watched a movie and I'm more interested in like, what was your journey like? Ah, ask me a question. Dude, ask me, ask me any questions. I say I'm I'm really intrigued by athletes. You know why? I love interviewing athletes. A lot of friends. Uh, a Rod's a friend of mine. I, I, I think I, I think there's a lot of similarities to any people that are operating at the highest level, whether that levels in business, whether it's in sales, whether it's in athletics. I think a lot of the same principles apply, and I kind of see people go through the same struggles. Like I wasn't the least bit surprised when you said, you know, the truth is at the end of the day people say it, but it really is true that it's the mindset, it's the ability to like almost show up. Every single day, you're like, you know, do you bring your best game to the table? Like, you know, when you have to do that, right? You know, everyone's, I, I think at the level you're at, 
there's a lot of really fucking talented people, right? I mean, there's, you know, not a lot, but there's enough. But then there's those that just, you know, on that day when it really matters most, when that pitch matters most, they don't choke. They they somehow can manage their emotions, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And I think, I mean, the, the biggest the biggest thing is understanding yourself. And if you believe in yourself to the highest level, then you can achieve anything you want. Right. It, it, it's really just how hard do you want to work? Do you wake up every day ready to go? 100% excited for the day, even if it's going to be a day full of just crap. Are you excited and ready for that? So if you do that, then you got a shot to, you know, for greatness. So, right, so you, 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 you asked me a question, but I want to ask you one question first, though. What, what's your, uh, you know, I'm big in the esports. Yeah. I like esports. I have, I have, I have a stake in an esports company called Game Square, and I I think okay. esports is really big. Like, you know, Juju was on my uh, podcast. He loves yeah. esports. Are you into esports at all? The video games yeah. and stuff. Oh, I love it. That's like that's my like getaway. That's my little like that, same as him, place. right? Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Well, because you can be a kid. I think like, and I get to talk to all my friends back home. That's how like we communicate. It's my way to like go back home and hang. That's how I hang out with my friends type thing. Like, I can be me. I can relax. I can breathe and I can just do what I want to do um, to where, you know, when it's, when it's the real life and I have to do all of that, it's baseball, it's working out. It's everything I can do to possibly be, you know, the best me possible. So video games allows me to just like kind of check out for a little bit. It's like almost also, I think for you, like when you're an elite athlete, it's like video games takes away any natural advantage you have. Like it doesn't yeah. matter that you're six foot three and you can throw the ball a hundred miles. Away. Like it doesn't matter. Anything. Like anything no. that was that you have and the natural gift is taken from you. And now it's equal playing field. Whose fingers? It's like a gift of the fingers and your Seriously. mindset and your focus and concentration, right? So like it's yeah. sort of it's a challenge and it's almost like, like an equal playing field for all, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. And that, and I, it's just like a lot of people don't get it. A lot of people like stop. Like I get messages like all the time, or I used to at least all the time. Like stop playing video games, start focusing on your job. And they're t like trying to tell me how to be me. And I'm like, I got here not listening to you and I'm going to continue not to listen to you. Yeah, I didn't get it either. I get it. Yeah, I get it, man. Like my son, by the way, my son loved video games growing up. I was like, dude, if you keep playing games like this, you're never going to get laid. You never gonna yeah. get laid. It's like, yeah, but I was wrong. Like now I was wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> now it's like I don't know. Every kid plays video games now. Every kid. It's, you don't. You don't see kids outside anymore. Like you don't see that. Like riding bikes. Just like being outside, getting into trouble. Like you rarely see that. Weird. Huh? What? What's your? What game do you play? What? What's your favorite game? Um, I like Call of Duty a lot. And then right now I've been playing a lot of MLB The Show, just because. It's new, it's fun, and I like baseball, obviously, so. All right, ask me a question, let's go. Come on, let's go toe for toe here, All right, anything so, you want. I mean, mostly I wanna know like how life has changed for you since, like after the movie. Like, cause the movie I watched was amazing and I wanna <laughs> kinda know one about like how that actual life part was, sure. but also after as well. Yeah, so I'll tell you the interesting thing about the movie. So the movie came out in the end of 2013. It was a huge hit. And I had all yeah. already, um, I had already had a pretty large fan base from the books. So mm -hmm. I was traveling around the world doing speaking, but it wasn't nearly like, you know, it was like, you know, whatever. I, people knew me, um, but it was more defined in certain big cities and not really everywhere, right? Then the mm -hmm. movie came out and it was this massive hit, right? And for those, like, there was like a six month period it was all about the movie and I got booked everywhere. Um, and it was unbelievable. My business took a big notch up, right? And then it started to dissipate because like anything else, you know, the movie gets out of theaters, it comes on video and then it goes and that's that. And I was like, maybe for like, you know, so now like nine months, maybe 10 months later. And then it's like, it's like the um, sub September or maybe October of, no, September of, of, the, of that 2014. And my daughter, who was in college then, she calls me up and she's like, and it's really loud. She's like, Dad? I'm like, what? She goes, there's something really weird going on. She goes, I'm in the, the University of Michigan football stadium, Ann Arbor, and there's 50,000 people pointing at me, and they're singing this song called Jordan Belfort. I'm yeah. like, what? She goes, there's a song. They wrote this song about you called Jordan Belfort, and it's like the number one song that plays in every college bar, every party every club and they play and every kid knows they i'm like what come on she goes i swear she video chats me and sure enough there's fifty thousand people chanting my name and i was like damn right 
Shortly thereafter that, she calls me, she goes, Dad, all my friends are dressing up for you as Halloween, in Halloween. It's like people are dressing up as the Wolf of Wall Street. And I'm like, what the fuck, right? And what yeah. ended up happening is, is unlike other movies, it became, it's very rare, but it became almost like a Rocky Horror show, a cult classic, like an ultra crazy cult classic. For example, when the end of the, end of the next year came out, they, they, they do the elite, most illegally downloaded movies. The Wolf of Wall Street beat out Frozen is the number one most illegally downloaded movie in the history of movies because like every kid in the world wants to, right? And then it just, it became a freight train out of control after that. It just took on a life of its own. And what happened was it became this must-see coming-of-age movie where every kid would watch it again and again and again. And by the time they, they it starts when they're like 14 or 15, by the time they exit out of uh, junior high school, they've seen it a few times. When they get out of high school, they've seen it 10 times. By the time they exit college, they've seen it 30 times, though every line, and now they're ready to enter the workforce. And yeah. I started noticing my business just started skyrocketing over the years. So ultimately, I got lucky because I was not a bit big into social because I'm older. Like, I didn't give a shit. But my kids graduated they're like that. You got to start doing yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah. So my kids came to work for me a bunch of years ago and they started my social. My so And once my social started, it just like kind of coincided with the movie and everything just took off and sort of intersected. I think it culminated like at the beginning of this year with the whole GameStop thing and the crypto and everyone just now. It's like, it just really is insane. The, I can't walk down the street from here to there without getting stopped by someone for a picture because they people... I think what people love about the movie is like it's it's like the comeback story, aspirational, yeah. like that you had everything you you just had nothing you made you know millions of hundreds of millions if not billions you made other people rich and then you lose it all go to jail and you come back and you're successful again like I think that's yeah. people love a comeback story. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I would say so. I was more just like the lifestyle that you lived was insane and like. I know there's stuff on there that like you couldn't even put on there because I know when you like when you're living that kind of high life, like there's so much shit going on that you probably don't even remember. So listen, you know, number one, you could never get away with this stuff anymore because That's you right. got like in your in your generation, everyone's got a camera on their phone. Yeah. Like just remember when I did this stuff, no one had a camera. So we <laughs> yeah. could do shit. Like you, you wouldn't believe it, my friend. You would not believe the shit that we would do on a daily basis. And it was just like, it just, we did it. And like, that was like, it was almost our own self-contained universe. And what was abnormal outside of the four walls behind you of that boardroom became the normal. Like we would just do crazy shit. And it also became a process of like, you know, we were looking for higher and higher cliffs to jump off of and shallower and shallower pools to land in. Like, you know, you, you, you yeah. feel like an action junkie. You want to just keep what's next, what's next, what could be more extreme. So that process, like, for example, I mean, let's go to your life for a second, right? You, yeah. you, you're you at the pinnacle now. You win the Cy Young, right? Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're a killer, right? $50 million. But like, for you, you're like, okay, yeah, man, it's great. I got my video, I got on my picture, it's great. Like, what's, it's always like a human, yeah. it's like, what's next? Like, what's my next challenge? Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how high you climb. Like, people would say, oh, Blake's got the world by the bull. But for you, you're like, eh, it's, you know, it's great, man. Yeah, it's all great. Yeah. But like, I got, what's my next adventure? What's my next conquest? Not in a bad way. Just like, it's just, I think it's just human nature. You know, yeah, it's just the, you know, you're just like, you're addicted to work in a way, like, and pretty you're addicted much, right? to finding, you know, a way to challenge yourself and the way to, I mean, for me, I just like, I enjoy having purpose every day. So like when I, when I got drafted and signed to play pro ball, like, and I was going home for the off season for like five, six months, like, and I'm just sitting there, like just training for baseball. That's all I was doing. Like, I felt like I had no purpose. Like, there's no meaning to my life. I just play baseball for six months, and that's it, and then train the next six. So I ended up getting a job uh, at a marina being, like, a dockhand for, like, four years. And I was working 40-hour weeks just to have purpose, like, just to fill that, like, void inside. And then I do my workouts and everything like that later in the night. Um, but, like, I don't know. I just feel like no matter what you do, it's like, it is, it's always the next thing. Like what's next? What can I do to be better? What, it's always the next thing.
All right, listen up here, all you small business owners out there, and I know there's a lot of you watching right now, entrepreneurs like you and I are busy people. And the last thing you wanna deal with is HR issues, right? Especially in your company. But let me tell you, HR managers don't come cheap. That's why I love Bambi. It's a no frills, no fuss, HR firm created specifically for small businesses like yours that customize your policies to fit your business needs. And they'll even help you manage your day-to-day -day responsibilities. You get your own dedicated HR manager who's available to you just if they were in-house. The best part, ready for this? It's only $99 a month. So let's change your perspective on HR and make it your company's greatest strength. Go to Bambi.com slash wolf right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash wolf spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot -E com slash wolf. All right, want to grow your business, diversify your content? You're not going to find a better tool out there than Melon for your live streaming needs. Blazing fast response time, low CPU usage, all available right in your browser. Go to melonapp.com slash wolf and start streaming today. Hey, JB here, the real wolf of Wall Street. Here to tell you that the Wolf Network has moved. Check out our new site at www.wolf.online. Again, that's www.wolf.online. What do you mean you're not a member yet? Come on, sign up right now and start taking control of your life and your money. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. Let me ask you a question, can I ask you off, off topic? You're yeah. at the you're at the you're at the fucking pitcher's mound. I'm at fucking I'm at home plate. Okay. <laughs> What's the chance if you throw ready yeah. one hundred pitches at me? Am I gonna even hit? Is it? Can I even? Is it possible? Not possible, right? Uh, and I'll tell you what's coming. Yeah. You like, tell me. Okay. You say, listen. I'm gonna throw a nice little fucking. You know, nice, it's like a my so relatively crazy. slow pitch right down the fucking pike. Am I ever gonna hit that pitch? Never. I mean, you might hit it, but you ain't going to do But like anything more than an inch, it. like, oh, dude, I think we should do this. I think we have to go, have like a little demonstration in person and just see how fucking inept I am, okay? Where we literally get you there, we we'll have the whole thing filmed, we'll get the speed gun out, yeah. or I'll have my fucking orthopedist, I'll have a masseuse there, we'll get everyone, because I'll fucking pull 10 muscles in the process for sure, Let's right? Let's do like, it. Right, right, we fucking get this whole fucking thing worked out, and we'll just watch, and like, you, know, you I want you to slowly, like, okay, you, you start like, you know, like a little girl, like five it mile. Well, I, I hit it, right? And then we stop going over here. It's Sorry, 10 mile, 20 mile. And we see, what's the fucking level of my fucking eye, hand, hand, hand eye coercion? Where can I just not? It's like, <laughs> what do you think? The, okay, let's make up. We're going to do this. What do you think the fucking, the numbers is it? At 42 miles an hour, dude, you, you're you not even going to get, you know, is it 65 miles an hour? I like 65, 70. 65? 70? I mean, even like, I don't know. For I'm me, a good like, athlete, by the way. I'm like, so I'm a good you, athlete. Yeah, so if you're a good athlete, how are you at ping pong? You play ping I'm, pong. I'm a, I'm a great tennis player. I'm a really good tennis. Like I can okay, get the court with Roger Federer and hit. He'll kill. I never get a game or a point though, but I can hit the ball back and forth. Like I'm hitting yeah. world class. So tennis I would players. say like 85. Like you get 85. Really? 85 is like comfortable. Yeah. I think I'm looking more like I'm old, man. I think something happens though. Like what happens? Okay, so what happens to guys? Like you would think like that. Okay, baseball players have a longer career, right? Yeah. Pictures, not as much. Like you, because it, it, it's your fucking it's, arm. Yeah, right? it's uh, it all depends but on it, the player. But sometimes you see like a big old baseball plays, fucking got a pop belly out the fucking ear. He comes and the yeah. guy can still fucking hit the ball a mile, right? Because it's, yeah. it's like, right? And then the guy's got to limp around the base. It's a home runner. If the guy hits like a triple, he'll get tagged out of first. Let's, it's got to be a home runner. It's fucking nothing, right? Yeah, so, seriously. So like, but wh why is that? That that um, like, what's the oldest? What happens to the players? Now, like in the movie, the big, uh, what was the um, uh, money ball, money ball, right? Yeah. Where they have uh, the player who was named David uh, Justice, was it, right? It was in yeah. Moneyball. And he's at the end of his career. And like he's saying, he can't hit the ball. What happens to some, to an athlete? Is it their uh, hand, their brain doesn't function as quick? Their muscles? Is it their injuries? What is it? Yeah, I mean, they're just slowly becoming, you know, they're just fading out of old. their prime. Yeah, they're just getting old. But... But That's what the is, thing. It is, the hand, is it the hand eyes or the muscles that don't work? It's probably the muscles. The hand eyes definitely still there. And then the they've seen so many pitches, so they they can understand what's coming and try to cheat to it. Um there, there's many ways that benefit them, but their body's just not as strong as it was when they were 28. 
and nothing could affect them. But, I mean, the game now is so driven towards young players and they don't see – because it's all, like, analytical stuff that they're going off of. And they don't see the the value of an older player when his numbers are depreciating. Yeah, that's true. But they don't under, understand, like, the value this player has in a clubhouse with all of these young guys and how they can help them grow and be a way better player. Um, so, like, yeah, the older guys that get older and, you know, they're not as good, but they've been around and seen so much baseball that, you know, their, their advice and their wisdom is – is even that much more important. And that's usually what you're paying for on the back end of these guys anyways. So got it. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's the only thing that frustrates me is that they're kicking all the older guys out, but yet they have so much experience and so much wisdom to give on the younger guys to make, you know, them so much better on and off the field. What do you think about uh, that? Do you, do you, I assume you've seen Moneyball, right? Yeah. I was watching it on the plane the other day. When you saw that, was it you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's, of course, we all knew that, like, now that's common. Or, or was it, did it really surprise you? Like, I was pretty surprised when I saw that because I remember that team. I remember the Oakland A's. I remember when that happened. I, you know, and yeah. it was interesting to see what was really behind that. I, didn't, I had no idea about that. What did you think when you saw that movie? I watched, like, the first probably, like, 40 minutes of it the other day. I haven't watched it in a long time. But when I did watch it, from what I can remember, I mean, I like. I mean, now knowing – as much as I know about baseball analytics, playing for Tampa, that's how they run. Um, and then watching, you know, Oakland do what they did. And I mean, I liked it. It's just, it's thinking out of the box, but again, everything can't be that. I mean, that, that is a big thing that can help in a lot of areas, but you also got to, you know, measure the human element, what he can bring that way. So, I mean, that was definitely cool to see from, you know, Moneyball and they brought that in, but there's so many more things that need to be measured that numbers can't right yeah, yeah that right. that numbers can't measure yeah so got it um i'm, I'm telling you we're, uh, here's what we should do i got i can see the whole thing we each here's what we do right you're a rich guy i'm rich we're gonna each put up like fifty thousand dollars for charity yeah okay and you know either way we'll give we said to your charity or my charity like to some kids or some you know some drug addicted orphans or something terrible like that right like it's yeah. just be a win-win for everyone and we'll sit there and we're gonna like really you're, we're gonna make a bet we're gonna do an under over here of what is the like how badly embarrassed i'm gonna be on this field we're like i'm gonna get fucked I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna put a fucking i'm gonna get dressed up in the fucking uniform and the whole thing i'm gonna sit there and fucking get my myself all ready for this you know i promise i won't practice before I'll go. i'm not gonna practice six months before talking that yeah, you know? i'm going going in fucking cold yeah you know what I mean? but also by the way you know i have like i'm like i walk out like i'm like a wounded warrior i got like an artificial shoulder i got replaced here i got f- yeah. spinal fusion i got an artificial fucking a knee replacement <laughs> but, but, I, dude, that I, life. but I, <laughs> dude i know dude i lived a freaking life we had, yeah. a, we, had a, we had a saying when we were like, you know, going through this shit. It was like, if you go out with the boys, you're going to wake up with the men. That was the, oh, whole, like- the whole philosophy was, if you want to go out with the boys, you got to wake up with the men, right? Now there's people say, what about the women? All right, fine. I mean, I mean you women too. It's like, okay, I'm not socially correct, right? But the point is, is that like, this was, it was work hard. It was like party hard, but work hard. And then yeah. people always say to me today, like, you know, you know how'd you... How'd you survive that shit? I'm like it was pretty, kind of pretty fucking easy, but it made like it made sense to me yeah. when I was in my twenties. Like now, like I'm so before twenty something years. It's a long time, right? And yeah. the, you know the things that make sense to you when you're twenties and thirties don't make a lot of sense in your fifties. No, yeah, you, know, you, you fucking can't do it, right? But I mean, I I have friends now. Watch them; they're just freaking partying like rock stars. Like I mean, like I have a couple of friends that successfully sold their business, and they're just out. I'm like, fuck, is that what I was like? And I'm like, no, I was actually a lot worse than that. Worse. Like you know, I was yeah, I was full, full on, man. I was full on. What's the worst? Did you ever have a time in your life like before you? When, I know when you go pro, there's like all these you, you just can't do that. You lose those yeah. liberties, and if you do that shit, like what's the guy's name? Who was the guy that um? Was got drafted. I think it was in, in um, and he just completely like just, it was football, right? What was the name? What was the football player? Johnny Football. Johnny Manziel, right? Yeah, Johnny, right? And he just completely like yeah. couldn't make the transition. What do you think that's about? Like when someone is that talented, allegedly, like yeah. and, and that much like destined for greatness, and they just completely screw the pooch. Is it all up here, or is it 
like that. There's yeah. different physical. Like when you get to the highest level, there are certain things that you can cheat out at the like height at the col- Like a quarterback in college could be five ten, or if he and he can't see over the line in pro ball. Like how much is that? You think? Well, yeah. So I mean, I never played football, but I can understand that. You know, the the level of play from college to NFL is definitely a lot different. But I mean, one thing about it, he's in, he's in college, he's in high school, he's the man. He goes to college, he's the man. He goes to, and there hasn't been any struggle to really like get in his face and anything. Like he's, he's giant, he's the man. Like that's all he's ever known. He goes to Cleveland, he's still the man. And then after that year, like now people are dogging him, they're ragging him. And now every time he goes out, now it's not fun anymore. Now it's like, look, he doesn't care about his career. And they start ragging him more. So it could just spiral down because that might have made him do it more. It might, I don't know. I don't really know him. But I know that I, he liked to party. He, he would show that. He was always out in the scene, the spotlight. Um, so I can see, like, he was always the man then getting just destroyed by fans and then probably going out more. And then, you know, it's just he's a young kid at the time. So – Again, there's there's a lot there. He probably doesn't even know what he's doing. Now that he's older, he probably looks back like, yeah, I probably should have done things differently. But, you know, I guess that's life. You live and you learn. Why is it that it seems like so in baseball, the system is about slow development, development and really yeah. shepherding them along. While in football, it's like they get out of the NCAA and they're right into fucking football. Obviously, because of the yeah. you know, injury factor, right? And the life yeah. expectancy is so much lower. But it would seem that for the emotional side of the equation, the, that, that sort of slowing down that success curve a bit is probably a really good thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, if they had a program in place to where, you know, you can develop them as men and make them, you know, mature a little bit quicker, that would definitely help. But again, like the football guys, they go to college, they're the man. They're like the man at their university that can do whatever, have whatever. Like, so then when they go to the NFL, it's like, it's, it's just a lifestyle. Like, and I get, it's just a lot harder for them, you know, to be, because the talent can play a big factor. And then they go to the NFL and it's like, now you got to learn to be a man and you just got done with college where everything's catered to you and everything is, you know, to help you be, you know, great on the field. And then you go to the NFL and they help you, but not as much. And the competition's way harder. And now you have to learn a lot of different things to, you know, make sure you're on the field every week. It's just, yeah, they, I feel like they need something in place to really help develop them as men because they're still – 22 23 21 like young men young yeah. really not even like yeah they're just they're really young so for me i felt like i had a place where i had to continue to learn and build and develop for five and a half years before i made it to the big league so i had a lot of time to grow how rare is it or does it ever happen where someone comes in and just bypasses the whole farm system and just comes right out into the majors how often does that happen I mean, it happens a good amount. Um, not really like straight to the league from the draft. I, I've never really seen that. But within like the first year, like the year they're drafted into the big leagues, I mean, you'll see that a good amount. And uh, yeah, but it all depends like what team drafts you. I think that's like the biggest thing. Because when I was with Tampa, they work slow no matter what. They don't care how good you are. They're going to slowly develop you, which in ways is cool because now – you're also developing their mind because they're like, I deserve to be there. I belong there. And now they have to fight that battle within themselves to continue to succeed at, in AAA. Self-belief. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that I, I can see how that works and that helped me a lot. And then there's also guys like Manny Machado who within a year is in the big leagues and dominating. So, yeah, I mean, even like Bryce Harper watching him come up, Trout come up, like those guys, they just come up and they just – they just dominate. They're more ready than others. Most of one of the interesting things, the sad things, I think, like in 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 football and basketball, you still see as much as these guys make. Many of them end up with no money when it's all over. Like they just don't have the wherewithal, or they get bad advice, or too many hangers oners. Is that as common in baseball as well? Maybe not as common, but I, it's definitely com- it definitely happens. Um, but I think it's just. Yeah, I mean, when do you really ever learn about, you know, saving money, how to like doing taxes? Like we never learn any of this. Like you don't learn any of that. So it's hard to really blame the athlete because you don't know where they're raised, where they're from. If they've never had this kind of money. So of course 
some people like to live that lifestyle and to live that lifestyle it's very expensive and so it's just it's different it plays a lot of ways um for me like i've just been around a lot of people in the financial world that can help me i, I just i grew up around a lot of people that made it easy to learn and sure not to spend money and to save what's your, what's your parents money. what's your dad and mom do what kind of uh, so yeah so my my dad uh he he did construction like my whole life and then my mom did real estate and then she's had her own barber shop and has cut hair for 30 something years now but and then now my dad just coaches baseball and does what he loves and then uh from the financial side like it was the funniest thing like my older brother's best friend my older brother is four years older than me and his best friend at the time was two years younger than him he was my tutor and uh he ended up going to the university of washington doing business and then now he's in a hedge fund and he's like part owner and like he's legit and he was the guy that kind of like helped me with like investing my money what i need to do with it how i should spend it and he's kind of like the guy that's like you know kind of brought me up through that so you got lucky in the sense that you had so at least decent people around you giving you advice because i think what happens with a lot of people is they just they make their first big hit and all their friends, their cousins, you know, the media yeah. family. It's like, and in some cases, listen, of course, if you know you, if you know a lot of these athletes, their mom or their dad really sacrificed a lot over the years. So of course, it's a great thing. The first thing that they want to do is they want to buy a house for their mom or a car or give back or, or retire yeah. them. I think that's great. I think mm -hmm. that that's a great thing. I think the thing is not so great is when like their third cousin twice removed, you know, who they yeah. hadn't seen in 10 years, suddenly, you know, calls them up and guilts them because they, you know, they think if you make 10 million, then you get to keep 10 million. They don't understand that yeah. 10 million ain't Half 10 million. Uh, after all the agent fees and taxes, and then you got to say it's probably a few million bucks that you really have access to. And that can go really fucking fast. It's an expensive world, you know? It really yeah. is an expensive world, right? So I think what happens, and then, then the football, especially football, where the the life expectancy at Juju Smith Schuster. It's like it's, it's like for four years. Yeah. For most people, you got a four year window, and then you're done. And like that's that's not a lot of time to make money. It's just mm. not, you know. No matter how much you make, you know. Yeah, and the, and the people that really make the most money there are the guys that stay the longest are the quarterback. They make the most right. money and they play the longest. And yeah, but all the like running backs, receivers, linemen, lineback, like those guys are just they take a beating. So it's like. And exactly who like who teaches them how to take care of their body who teaches them how to do all of this like that's with luck of health and then being able to get money to put money into yourself to keep you on the field i get it well dude one of the things we spoke about before we started was this whole thing you were intrigued by to sell me this pen yeah <laughs> the, the power the power of persuasion and sales let me ask you a question yeah. um in baseball i assume you have a manager and an agent they do all of that stuff for you right so all the yeah. uh the business stuff is taken out of your hands right yeah what do you want to do though when you get out of when you're done with baseball and you're gonna be a very yeah. wealthy young guy still do you ever think about what comes next for you or have you already started investing in stuff and you know you're, you're setting yourself up for next stage of your life or is it still too early yeah i mean i always think about it so i mean obviously I, i'm investing my money um, and I haven't gotten too into like learning that I just trust, you know, he's my family friend. I've known him since I was, shit, I've known him since I was like four. So I've known him forever. And, uh, yeah, so I let him do that. I don't really get too far into it, but I always ask him questions about like, uh, you know, I want to do, I don't know what I want to do. I know I want to have purpose. I know I want to teach kids with baseball. I know I want to do that. Um, and I will, but even like real estate, like building houses and like making it like, that's fun to me. And I know I'll make more money investing than I would per se, building a house, buying property and doing stuff like that. But being able to have purpose every day and still make a, you know, a good amount of money off that, that'd be fun. Um, even like owning my own restaurant, I know like the numbers, they don't help you. And the chance that you actually succeed is terrible and then the chances that you go in like with a friend or like you're gonna ruin that relationship like i know all of that but just the you know maybe that like down the road when i get older and that's just like my little place to go hang out and you know yeah. make it a good vibe but 
I definitely have things I want to do. I want to even Nike, like I'm interested in Nike and Jordan and I have a lot of shoes and I've had that since seventh grade. So like maybe, you know, doing something where I could be a designer for them or something like that. I mean, I have a, a lot of options, and a lot of interests, but I think that's just me as a person. Like I just always want to do something. One thing I would definitely recommend to you, and I think that your fr- family friend would definitely um, say I'm right, is that even though you trust him, you should still learn about the stuff yourself. Yeah. It's important that you also know, you know what's being done. Um, a, you never know what's going to happen. Something happens to him or whatever. There's just a comfort that you have when you like kind of know a little bit more about money and investing. I'm not saying you need to become an expert at it or get obsessed with it, but like yeah. you seem like the kind of guy like you know if you put your mind to anything, whether it's baseball or a video game, you're gonna be really good at it. So, you know, it's an, I think it's it's a it's a skill set that will serve you over time is just to have a little bit more sophistication with money and investments and understand it's not hard. It's really not. No. It doesn't take a lot of brain power. It just takes a bit of interest. I, like, for example, last week I had a podcast, I did a podcast with a, a couple of big influencers, right? One of them was a girl, very pretty girl, very sweet girl, like very, and I didn't realize how smart she was. It was Amanda Cerny, right? And had her on my, on my podcast and she's got 20, 30 million followers, right? Yeah. At least. And, you know, in the last six months, she's educated herself in crypto and she's made a ton of money. But it was just to see someone like that's, you know, young, 20, mid 20s, late 20s. And it didn't, six didn't take that long to really get a good understanding of money and, and trading. And, you know, it's just something that's good for you to have. It's a, kind of a tool in your tool belt. So I think, every, I think yeah. it's everybody, not just you, but a lot of young people, like almost like that, ah, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's not my thing. But it's really, you know, because eventually someone's going to try to take you to the cleaners at some point in your life, you know, yeah. not the guy who's your family friend, but it's just good for you to have some sophistication there. Um, no, for sure. That, and he's told me you know, that. Yeah, so, like, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. Right? Well, let's, let's talk to him about, I want to talk to him about, about putting up a little money in a chat for, for a little thing. We got to do this thing, right? Yeah, we're we going to do it. It's going to be so much. We're going to film it. We're going to fucking blow it up on social media. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. We're going to, yeah. what, what's your favorite charity, by the way? I mean, I was doing this charity where it was like my own little thing where I was giving like uh, PS4s, Xboxes, and these little like monitors are called games cases. And I'd put like, a PS4 or Xbox in it with a bunch of games on it and I'd send it to hospitals like with kids. I got a great I know, idea. Yeah. Great idea. Ready? We'll take your that charity. I'm gonna have yeah. my company, Game Square. Yeah. Okay, you and I maybe we'll each put in like I'll I'll put up twenty five or fifty, whatever you're comfortable with, we'll put it in, we'll yeah. match it, right? And I'll have them match it too or double it or something. And yeah. then we'll they'll do the sponsor the whole fucking thing and they'll donate a ton of money to your charity. We'll make it a we'll make it a really great thing for kids to get yeah, I believe every kid right now should have a yeah. video game nowadays, right? It's yeah. time well spent, right? You know, we'll have a lot yeah. of fun and, and we'll see, I you know, what, what happens here. Cause I I I think I'm gonna kind of fuck it up at sixty five miles. And I think 65 is my limit. I'm, I just got this sixth sense here that like at 66 miles an hour, the ball's like invisible to me, you know, but like, we'll, we'll I, yeah. see. You got me I 85, think, which I, I like, by the way, but I don't think that yeah. gets high. <laughs> I say I could easily like comfortably say, I think 75 you fit. 75. Okay, so like, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take fucking vitamins before. I'm gonna like take vitamin A and shit and like <laughs> all the things I could possibly drug myself up with. Like, there's gotta be, I need to go to like a doping doctor to like for steroids and shit to get prepared for this. To really, I gotta go back. Just I wanna peek for one day on camera, one right? Day. One, day, one, one day. I like it. And it is 78 mile an hour fucking fastball, right? I see it's a slow ball, right? How far, how fast is your fastball? Uh, that's like 98. Like that's the top. 98, 98, 99 is what I'll top, but I'll sit 95. So like, okay, so you, if I'm at the plate and you throw a 98 mile an hour fastball, right? Am I even going to take a swing at it? No, no way, right? You'll I'll, laugh. Just... <laughs> you'll laugh, gonna... I promise. What's, what's going to happen? It's like, I'm going to be like this and you're like, all right, go. You're like, I already, I already pitched. Is yeah, already like, I saw 98 one time and I just started laughing. I was like, you expect me to hit that? <laughs> I want in on this. I want in on this side bet here. I think he's out of his <laughs> mind. What do you think the number is? This is I right, introduce yourself so everyone can hear this. This is the, the yeah, voice it, of reason here. Yeah, my name right. is Jason Hernandez, guys. I do uh, work with Boris Marketing. Blake and I work uh, work hand in hand day to day. There's no shot you're hitting 80 miles an hour. I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> no now. fucking way, right? Okay. <laughs> what? Like, what's? Let's. We're gonna have uh, some side bets here. All the money goes to charity. But what's the fucking? What's the number? You think? Honestly, I I, I don't see you hitting 65, man. 
That, <laughs> even that's going to be right. Okay, what is yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to, If I practice for a year, I'm going to hit 65, right? Yeah, maybe. Probably. I'll give you the, if we're going to set the line right now, I'm going to set the line at 70. I'm going to set 70, the line okay. at 70. Yeah, over 70. Okay. I mean, listen, a, a, a squirrel, a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then, right? But... Right. I don't. I don't know if 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 over seven. But not a gonna... blind squirrel with a fucking with his fucking one paw in his cast and a limp. <laughs> that blind squirrel needs to be perfect nuts lined up, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, and this guy's. So what's the? What do you think is this really? Is it fifty miles an hour? Fifty five. I, I think sixty. You're flirting with it, right? Sixty. If if maybe after a few pitches, 15, 20 pitches, maybe. I got um, confidence in it. But now wait. Easy. Let me ask you this: how, how many how many swings do you get here? How many balls do you get to swing at? I, I should probably get like twenty warm up swings or something. Just I, I'm also gonna throw up my fucking shoulder, probably. But but the list, But here's the thing. Listen, I I, I want to tell you. I went to a batting cage like many years ago when I was like in my prime. Or I'm talking like my twenties, right? And it was like in the slow cage. What is the slow cage at like a at an amusement park? Like at a what's the slow one at? That's probably like fifty. Maybe. Yeah, like fifty, Blake. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say maybe. around fifty. Okay. I was having trouble at the slow cage even making contact when oh, I was really? in my prime, okay? Just so you understand, I, I, started making, I, started, wait, no, I started making contact like after a little while, 50. But when we went up to the fast cage, I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, that, I'm like, no. And now, that's 80. The, <laughs> yeah, that's like 75, thing, 80. 75, 80. All right. Now, just here's the thing. Though. I, I'm a really high-level tennis player. So if you serve the ball like 120 miles at me, I could return a 110-mile-an-hour serve. But that they do not it's they do not transfer. I know that they don't because it's not like that. In other words, it doesn't transfer. Because I've had people serve a ball at me like, and even like at 120, it takes me like 10 or 15 to even get my racket. The first one, you're like, holy shit. You know, and then it's about almost like tracking the ball. I guess you, you got to track it off the racket head or something. But I, I'm, we got to do this. And I, I, oh, I'm yeah. probably, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm probably, because I don't make a total ass of myself. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to like a batting cage before I'm going to hire like, who, who's the best batting coach? Who is the best batting coach in the world? Uh, I'm not sure. Mark McGuire. We got, yeah, Mark. We're gonna get. We're gonna get. Like, some, I'm gonna prep for this shit. With train for like 30 days, <laughs> vitamins and, and steroids. I'm gonna everything, <laughs> everything illegal I can do to break every rule I can on this thing. I want to get juiced up, like, cause I'm, I'm a fucking amateur. No one's gonna drug test me, cause I still have cocaine in my system. For 30 years. I'm sober. 30 years. I'll probably still find cocaine in my system. 30 years later. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if you can return a 100-mile-an-hour serve in tennis, you, you I got can. a chance. But we're talking 60 feet now, right? A 60-foot mound compared to it, how, how long is a tennis court? I, I'm not sure. It's um, different. He also watch. They throw the ball up. You're tracking the ball. You're seeing it come off the racket. Here, it's like behind him. and it's it's By the time your eyes even pick up the ball, it's probably almost on you. That's the boy. problem, I think, with baseball. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they, it's not like they're like they're not like all right. Here's the ball, ready. It's like it's like you know <laughs> their, their back is facing. Next thing you know, the ball's five feet from you. You're, you're, it seems like you almost have to swing the second it leaves. What what is the secret to this? Is I have to hire a. We have to get a. We're gonna do some research. We're gonna hire. I'm I'm gonna make this happen here, and uh, I'm gonna surprise. I'm gonna fucking shock you guys here, okay? And I'm gonna like hit a ball. And it's gonna be it's gonna be just heard shot heard around the world or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see uh, this. Either now way, we, we're gonna have fun, right? Though, right? We're gonna have fun. We have sure. a blast, right? We'll have a media frenzy, and we'll be just awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's gonna be fun. So, so are we having Blake pitch to you as well? We're gonna Blake is gonna pitch to me. Yeah, yeah, Blake's yeah. gonna pitch to me. All right, beautiful. Well, who's the best? Who's gonna have the catcher to give me coaching? Not the you motherfucker. The catcher's gonna fuck with me. You, you'll, you'll never. Hit the I'll ball. do it. I'll do. It. I, I caught. I caught in the minor leagues, Jordan. So there we go. I got all you. Right, I got right. you, Blake. Yeah. We'll okay. Here we go. go. Here we go. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Does it freak you out? I assume sometimes people like these amazing batters will fucking hit one out of the park, right? Yeah. And this does it freak like, you out when they're like, "How the fuck did he get through that?" Does it? Yeah, and they're always freak- like timed up, and yeah, I mean, you I always laugh at it. But like when the, the, when the guy hits hard. it out of the park, do you like you're like holy shit? He actually hit that ball. Right? Does it freak you out when you get like how often does someone hit a home run off of your fastball? My fastball, not as much, um, but it, it happened. I mean, it, obviously, it's gonna happen a, a good amount. But um, it's more like my if I hang like off speed pitches, those would like those would go pretty far. But whenever they hit a home run, like I usually know the second it hits their bat if it's gonna go out or not. 
Because you'll really? see, like, they'll hit it, and if I think it's a home run, I'll just put my glove up and, like, give me another ball. Like, I don't even watch them run around. I don't watch none of it. I just give me another ball. Really? Yeah. Who's the who's the batter that you think is the the most vicious guy to go up against? What batter right now? That I've ever faced, David Ortiz. Like I thought he yeah he was insanely difficult. What what happens? You ever hit someone with a with a fastball by accident? Yeah. <laughs> How, uh, what's, what's that feel like when you like? Does he like? Oh fuck! I'm really sorry, buddy. I'm like really yeah, fucking like, sorry. You're like or like the uh, you ever, ever charge you? You motherfucker! You ever ever try to like get really pissed at you and like go after you? Uh, no. No, but <laughs> doesn't happen. Yeah, no. You hit like, the same guy twice, they'll go after you, right? <laughs> you maybe, yeah. We'll have to test it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but what's it, what's but, it feel like, like, though? What does it feel like when you hit someone? With like you're like, oh fuck, I'm. Screwed. At first, you hit them, and then you're yeah, you're like, fuck, my bad. And then, <laughs> I, like, and then you're gonna dug out, and then, like, if you hit them like hard and you squared them up, you start laughing. Cause like you didn't mean to, but then it's funny because you're like that. They're hurt like that. What? Like you hit him in the rib or? Yeah, that gotta be terrible. Like I hit my best friend when I was 18. I threw a pitch 95. I hit him in his shoulder and broke his shoulder. And like when yeah. I hit him, I was like, I felt bad. I was just trying to throw the ball as hard as I could. I did that. Wow. I just didn't locate it. And then I hit him in the back and broke his shoulder. Holy shit! Yeah, that was crazy to me. I felt what, terrible. Was, it a, was he an athlete or no? He was good. He was legit. Yeah. Never again. That was the last fucking time. Yeah. Before that, yeah, he was great. Before that, then never yeah. recover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> All right. So, dude, listen. We have to plan this out. Um, I'm gonna have my people call you. We're gonna play. We're gonna have so much fun. We're gonna yeah, get Game to. Square to fucking get. They'll spawn them to sponsor you too. They're really. It's a big game esports. They're really big. I would love it. And, and, yeah, yeah. We'll set it up for you. And um, everyone, dude, Blake is he's the man. Check. What's your social media, by the way? Uh, my Instagram is Snellzilla4, and that's the same as my Twitter. Follow him on social. Dude, you should be posting all the time in your prime. <laughs> One thing I learned, Juju was uh, had him. He's a big into social TikTok, right? He's like, yeah. dude, m the biggest mistake the athletes make is they don't. They say, oh, I'll worry about it when I'm done. No, because no one cares when you're done. Now is the time yeah. everyone wants to see you and, and hear from you and engage with you. So mm -hmm. keep those posts coming. We'll, we'll do a big thing. We'll have some fun with it. And we'll have we'll a little drink afterwards. Sure. We'll, we'll be good, buddy. All right, listen, thanks for coming yeah. on, Blake. You're awesome. Yeah, Congratulations for all your success. Everyone, check out this podcast. Share it with your friends. And stay tuned for our little charity throw-off battle-off. We'll see how, how awful I am behind the plate against the world's greatest pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, pal. Can't wait, man. Thanks for having me.